What's a misty morning? Wow, well, I wasn't expecting this. I know the sun's up there somewhere, so hopefully it'll burn this lot off during the course of the day. The weather forecast is meant to be good today, so I'll just keep my fingers crossed. Okay, well it's Saturday the 18th of September 2021. It's about 9.45 in the morning, and I'm doing quite a leisurely walk today. Um, but I'm just outside Hartington, and I'm going to make my way across country, and then I'm going to rejoin the valley of the River Dove a bit later on. So I'm going to continue following the River Dove upstream from where I left off last time. So, good stuff. It's just after 10 o'clock now. And uh, when I plotted the route for this walk some months ago, uh, the actual total mileage comes to just under five miles. So a nice leisurely walk today. And I think the time it estimates taking the walk is about two hours and 20 minutes. However, for me, it will take considerably longer than that. I'll explain more a bit later on. That leads to Heathcote but I'm going to carry on down the main track because I'm going in the direction of Biggin. Nice to see the mist clearing now, I knew it would do. And the sun's taking over. Yippee! Well, just bumped into a really friendly chap called Chris. He's a mountaineering instructor. And uh, we're having quite a bit of a chat actually. Really nice chap. We were just talking about how lucky we are to live in this area and, and how sort of lockdown has has made people get out and appreciate their local countryside more. But uh, no, a really nice chap, Chris. He's uh, he's part of Mountaineering and Adventurous Activities. He gave me his card, so I'll look up his card, look up his website later on and see, see what it's all about. But yeah, really nice chap, so and very nice to meet you, Chris. Eventually, Highfield Lane descended to a road, which I followed briefly to reach a footpath on the right. Well, it's 25 to 11 now. I'm just outside the village of Biggin, but I'm not going as far as Biggin today. But I am going to go down part, but not all, of Biggin Dale. I began my walk through Biggin Dale, where the path fell gently into a descending fold, flanked by tall trees on the eastern slope. It's 11 o'clock now. As I said earlier, I'm only walking part of Biggin Dale, so this is as far as I go. If I was to carry on, that would take me down to Wolfscote Dale, but of course I did Wolfscote Dale on my last walk. So I'm going to cut up here, and do a bit more of a varied walk before I rejoin the River Dove. Leaving Biggindale, I took the path climbing up off to the right in a northwesterly direction, soon going through a gate to a track, which I would be following for about half a mile as far as Reynard's Lane. That was a really pleasant little loop just to incorporate part of Biggendale. Enjoyed that. Well, it's just after half past 11 now, and you might be sitting there thinking, why does this guy keep telling us the time today? Well, there is a very good reason for that. It's really just to remind you, um, those of you that have been following my YouTube channel for some time now, and also just to let people know who are new to my channel, that because I'm filming this walk, it takes me that much longer to do. Now, as I said earlier, when I had plotted this route, the actual estimated time was two hours and 20 minutes. Well, I've already done nearly two hours now because I started the walk, you know, about sort of half nine, quarters to 10. And I'm not even halfway through the route now and it's taken me nearly two hours. And it's because I keep stopping to take shots. So normally it takes me, I don't know, six hours on average to, to film a walk in a day. 
this one might not take me quite so long because it's a shorter walk and I'm doing quite well for time as it is now anyway compared to the amount of time it normally takes me to film a walk but it also, it's also because I do shots like this And then if I get that wrong, I have to do it again. Oh, this is what takes the time, you see. And also there's other shots like this. Cut. So what I would do now is stop recording Play back the shot, check that I'm happy with it. If I'm not, I do another take. Cut. So hopefully that's the shot I can use in the final edit. <laughs> but that's what takes the time to film, you see. And also, that's why I end up walking more miles than the actual walk. So, as I say, Today's walk was calculated as just under five miles, but I'll be walking more than five miles by the time I've done these shots that I've just shown you here. Okay, right, let's get on to the River Dove. Now, hopefully this is the shot I will use in my final edit of my film. <laughs> Something else I'll just mention is that, and people may or may not be aware of this, but I do actually feel quite self-conscious talking to the camera. I do get quite embarrassed about it in some ways. I mean, I'm talking to the camera now comfortably because I know there are no other people around at the moment, but if I saw a walker approaching me from the other way or from behind, I'd have to stop recording because I get embarrassed about it. I just dry up. I mean, I have gone to places where I've filmed and there are people around and if I think I'm not being watched I'll quietly get on with it but normally you'll hear me talking like this well I'm now walking along this road towards Wolfcote Dale and that's because <laughs> I'm very self-conscious about other people being nearby whilst I'm taking a shot because one thing I've, I've always one thing I, I don't enjoy is knowing when people are watching me if people are watching me I can't do it so I stop recording and particularly in a very busy place where there are lots of walkers around that's what adds time onto the filmmaking you see because i can spend ages just waiting for people to go by before i'll take the shot because i will not start recording and, and talk to the camera if there are people lots of people walking by i have to wait for them to go and that and sometimes i can be waiting for ages so again that's what adds time to the filmmaking so yeah that's a Another little bit of a, a revelation there in my filmmaking. The lane curved to the left, where I turned off right to a footpath descending diagonally across a field. Over a stile, I reached a narrow path, which dropped down to the River Dove. There's the River Dove. And it was just there, that was the point where I left the Dove on my last walk. So that's actually the start and end of Wolfscote Dale. But rather than going back down Wolfscote Dale today, I'm going to be continuing following the River Dove upstream. And I'm going to walk through Beresford Dale today. Just before Frankith Rocks Bridge, which I had crossed on my previous walk, I turned right to follow the path through the beautiful Beresford Dale. The area is associated with a famous angler, Isaac Walton. He frequently fished this part of the river with his friend Charles Cotton, who lived at nearby Beresford Hall. The hall was demolished in 1858, but the 17th century fishing temple survives. 
After a short walk through the open meadows, the path entered woodland at a footbridge. It's a quarter to one now, and I've crossed over to the Staffordshire side of the dove. I think now I'm going to find myself somewhere to stop and have some lunch. After lunch, I resumed my walk through Beresford Dale. I passed Pike Pool, so called by Charles Cotton, after the spire of rock that towers above the river here. And back in Derbyshire. The path was now slowly beginning to veer away from the River Dove as I walked through the final section of the wood. Eventually, I went through a gate leading out into the open country again. There was only about three quarters of a mile to go before I would reach the end of the walk, so I walked on gently to enjoy the surroundings. As I always like to say, absolutely wonderful. <laughs> now I was talking on my recent Dovedale walk that that dale is my is one of two dales in the Peak District that I would consider a favourite dale. Now what I really ought to make clear here is I am talking about the collective Dovedale, so I am including Dovedale, Milldale, Wolfscote Dale and Beresford Dale. That whole stretch between the foot of Dovedale and Hartington, that as one dale is one of my favourite dales. It's just, well, these last three walks I think have just proved that. Just absolutely wonderful. Climbing up slightly, I crossed a lane to take the path directly opposite which led me into the village where I would be finishing today's walk. Listen to those church bells, aren't they lovely? Well, it's just after two o'clock and I've arrived in the beautiful village of Hartington. The scenery in and around this charming old limestone village is outstanding. An important village since the Middle Ages, Hartington was granted a market charter in 1203 and became a major centre for a large rural population from the many isolated farms in the surrounding area. The village is centred around the spacious square with a much photographed duck pond as a focal point. There are some fine old buildings, including the Charles Cotton Hotel, St Giles Church, the Market Hall and Hartington Hall. There is a good selection of gift shops, cafes and pubs, 
as well as a couple of local village stores. The Hartington Creamery is unfortunately now closed, but the adjacent speciality cheese shop remains and still thrives. There was a wedding here. That's why I heard the church bells earlier. Wow, what a wonderful place to get married. It's a lovely place, Hartington. It's not hard to see why it's very popular. <coughs> From the duck pond, I walked up to St Giles Church, built of an attractively coloured local sandstone. It was mostly constructed in the 14th and 15th centuries and has a fine perpendicular style tower. It's been really nice walking around Hartington. It's always busy because it's popular, so it's understandable, but I never tire of walking around Hartington. It's a lovely place. And for me, coming here and making this film of the walk today has been nice because I haven't done a walk around Hartington for quite a long time. So that's been nice. But whenever I'm in this part of Derbyshire, I'll always stop at Berriswood Tea Rooms and buy myself a Bradwell's ice cream because I'm an absolute sucker for ice cream and particularly Bradwell's ice cream. It's a local Peak District ice cream. They sell it in other parts of the Peak. And uh, whenever I'm in Hartington, I'll always try and stop here and buy an ice cream because it's just lovely. It just makes my day. Okay, well, I'm nearly at the end of my day now. So I've just got one more thing I want to see before I leave. I climbed steeply up Hall Bank to visit one of the most impressive buildings in the village, Hartington Hall, now the local YHA. Dating back to 1611, the manor house still retains much of its original character and is one of the most popular youth hostels in the Peak District. Well, so once again, I'm going to refer back to my very first holiday in the Peak District in 1986, long before I moved to the area. Now, during that week, I stayed in youth hostels all throughout the week, and Hartington Hall Youth Hostel was one of the last ones I stayed in that week. I know that uh, I met lots of people um, before I stayed here, saying that Hartington Hall was their favourite youth hostel in the Peak District. And when I came here, it very quickly became mine as well. I mean, it's a beautiful building. I mean, even after 35 years, it's still a great place. I don't know what it's like inside now, but certainly in 1986, I do remember it being very well run, very well organised, um, and it was just a really delightful place to stay. Really nice. So, hopefully, it hasn't lost its charm today. Yeah, great youth hostel. It was one of the flagship youth hostels. Don't know whether it still is, but uh, yeah, really nice place. So I just wanted a quick look around here before I finish my day. Well, it's 20 to 4, and I'm just taking my last shot now here in Hartington. Just my final shot. I think this is the fifth or sixth take of this particular shot because I've cocked up my lines and then somebody just walked up the drive. And it's not their fault, but as I said earlier, I can't carry on filming myself talking to a camera when there's somebody nearby. So I just froze and then I had to stop recording. <laughs> hey ho, it's all good fun. So, yeah, I started recording this film at half nine quarter to ten this morning taking my last shot now it's well 20 to 4 so again it's taken me about six hours to film this walk average day so gives you an idea of how long it takes me to film a walk and when people actually say to me how long do, does the walk take when you the one that you filmed i say well i don't know because it takes me that much longer to film it 
But what I will say is, like I said in my introductory video, if you read the description below the video, there's a link to the route map. So there's one for this one, uh, and that's the route I've plotted. And it's about five miles, or just under five miles. And I'm sure it said it took two hours, 20 minutes. I don't know how that's calculated, but if you were just doing this walk without filming it, I'm guessing that's how long it would take. And finally, before I do go, I would like to give a shout out to Alan and Joe, two wonderful people I met about half an hour ago. I was actually up by the church, I was filming some shots there, and some we people walked by and two of them said, we've been watching you recently, they said. <laughs> so how lovely, it's, it's, it's always lovely to be recognized. And um, so yeah, nice to meet you, Alan and Joe. They've actually come from South Derbyshire and they've moved, they're not far from Hartington, they live fairly close by, um, but uh, they say they love it here. They, they absolutely love it around here. They've only been here about four weeks, I think they said. But uh, yeah, so far they're enjoying the area and I can't say I blame them. So really lovely to meet you, Alan and Joe, and I'm sure I'll bump into you again before long. <laughs>